like oh yeah all these guys are going after her but I'm not interested and it was like they were using these rejections as a way to like kind of like elevate their own status hi we're Julie and Kelly and we are here to find love we're two dating coaches analyzing reality dating shows in particular the bachelorette season 19 of Gabby and Rachel season we're very excited to discuss this very pivotal episode last night (laughs) (laughs) a lot happened make sure to hit the subscribe button at the bottom of the video just so you can keep up with the rest of our season so let's get right into it and this is kind of like the episode when it seems like the season is gonna split this is probably the last episode where we're gonna see everyone together and all these guys like in this state of confusion and ambiguity it seems like at the end of this episode the girls really were like, all right, we need to get our own groups of guys and not have this weird, who is he interested in? Who is this guy for? It seems like this was the, this this week was the final straw for them. So what happened this week is we got two one-on-one dates and a group date as usual. With the two bachelorettes thing, one thing that is different from typical seasons, usually the lead gets two one-on-one dates with two different people they're interested in. But in this season, each girl gets one one-on-one date. So Rachel went on her one-on-one date with Zach. This was, I I thought it was actually a pretty cute date. Yeah, Yeah. I thought it went pretty well. So um, Karamo from Queer Eye was kind of the host of their date. And uh, he set up this really cute little, like, Hollywood, like, try on all these cute, like, Hollywood gowns and then go to a Hollywood premiere, quote-unquote, type date but the actual movie that they sat down to see was like a bunch of home videos of the two of them like as children so it was it was super cute I thought Mm -hmm. they had like very good chemistry I think Zach to me seemed a little like nervous in the beginning I kept like joking I don't know I don't know if you watch that there's like this um really great youtuber I can't remember what this this guy's name is people probably know what I'm talking about but he's just like this wonderful like makeup youtuber who like does his makeup really great and he like works at sephora and he does this like great running bit of like what it's like when straight dudes walk into sephora that's what it felt like to me watching zach on this date (laughs) it was like he seemed so uncomfortable like at the beginning when they were like trying on clothes and karama was just like gassing them up he was like "Uh, uh, uh." i thought the exact same thing it was very validating for me to see how much rachel's season is starting to really warm up and that there are some men that are definitely there for her the memory yeah. of the airplane, the dad's bringing them to that, um, and like watching the airplanes take up, uh, like launch and land. I thought that was really cute, and it's such a that core was... memory um, for them to both share Probably. that. It just felt like a very visceral, like not in the right direction. That this is he's gonna go pretty far. The funny thing was though, while Rachel was out on her one on one date. Gabby was like, let me take this time to go visit visit the mansion, check out like what the other guys are doing. Like, let me use this time to like get some more time with the with the guys. So she visited the mansion and oddly the guys just seemed not very interested in hanging out with her while she was there. It was very strange. They were like mm-hmm. kind of being a little standoffish or like they were like playing football and she was like, uh, I think I mean, I kept wondering, like, why is one guy not, like, going and being like, hey, can I pull you aside and have, like, some one-on-one time? Like, nobody did anything like that. I was pretty surprised, and she seemed pretty shaken by that. It was like the roles were reversed. The last episode was all about Rachel's insecurities, and this episode was all about Gabby's insecurities. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, it seemed like she, this was kind of like the start of a very tough week for her because yeah these guys were just putting in zero effort a theme which continued into her one-on-one so Mm -hmm. we get to her one-on-one and she picks eric actually it was a two-on-one it was her eric and her grandpa which was so So cute cute. so yeah yeah so they went on a really cute little date to me i was pretty turned off by eric kind of from the get-go i didn't like him already two episodes like two episodes ago when he was kind of just like being a little squirrely about his intentions with both women but I definitely did not like him during this date he just seemed to me he seemed annoyed by the fact that Gabby's grandpa was there which should be like a great honor to have to be able to get to know someone who Gabby is so close to but he seemed annoyed to be hanging Mm -hmm. out with grandpa John and to be like doing this kind of like 
family friendly bowling date to me his he was just kind of like this is so weird like that was like his energy he just didn't seem Mm -hmm. like to me he was like he had this vibe of like wanting he was like oh man I thought we were gonna be able to like be all intimate and like make out but instead I have to like be all PG because grandpa's here like that was his energy and he just seemed annoyed Mm -hmm. to me so if I was I would be pretty turned off by a guy who was being a little shady to my grandpa I just think that this season is such a weird format that I don't really know how like I don't know if any of these guys really know how to act like in these situations and these dynamics and I do think that the grandpa date was so wonderful maybe too early on to offer that with someone like Eric I think that would have been a date where the relationship or the connection is more solidified but I think because Mm. he's still trying to get to like like he's developing feelings for her that it is kind of I think it is a little bit jarring to like introduce a family member into the date so soon right away because he is so important to Gabby. I would have liked that day to have happened later on in the season versus like her one of her first run on ones with this guy. It just didn't have the same type of effect or the same gravity that it should have had if he had really bonded with her and they had some more solid grounding. So I do think that with Eric, it's as hard. I I think in the situation he played ball in a way but at the same time he was just like I really want to get to know her more and the season's already so weird where he's like I could get to know um you know Rachel as well so then it's hard for someone's heart to be totally in on it Nate is a person that is very indicative of like I am so here for Gabby like I know this is my connection but I feel like a lot of the guys are still on the fence which was really frustrating to see in the episode and I think Eric's date was kind of an example of how that like just having another option can kind of make you kind of have your like one foot out the door almost rachel and zach's date was also like let's look at baby photos it's like i don't even know you why am i looking at your baby photos but it worked for them like they were fine kind of having like that kind of like let's talk about our family and our history date and i'm thinking about i mean they've done this in other kinds in other seasons too like for example in i want to say it was like peter's season Madison, who was eventually the person who he chose at the end, it didn't work out for them. But yeah. um, Peter took his first date with Madison was like to one of his family members like weddings or something or like his parents like vow renewal. It was something like that. That's what makes the season so frustratingly complicated for the woman. It's one thing if there is all of this intimate family gatherings happening of one person that you know you're fully wanting to be committed to it's another thing if you haven't chosen which side of the lane you want to be on and now you're meeting someone's family member where it feels like you're kind of getting pushed into that camp a little bit I I think you're right and also like Zach wasn't out there being all like weird and holding his cards close to his chest so I think like we could give the benefit of the doubt to Eric but I'm not going to. <laughs> like, this didn't feel like a. This didn't feel like a problem with the structure of the show. Which, granted, this is why Gabby. You're right that Gabby was emotional because of the structure of the show, and maybe Eric was reserved, at least initially, because of the structure of the show of the season. Yeah. But at this moment, there is a girl sitting in front of you, crying, telling you her her story, and you're just sitting there like, yeah that's an Eric problem that has nothing to do with the season at that point it's like what are you doing man he she was so alone in that moment that she literally got up left the table and went to the producers she just got her, she just took her drink went to the producers and she just sat there with the producers crying so because so someone would take care of her because mm-hmm. Eric was giving her nothing she had to literally get up and go get the care that she needed from the production people I mean yeah. I, I was like shocked that she came back and gave that wonder bread boy like a rose after he did literally nothing to deserve her love and affection to me what this felt like was this was less of like a there's a problem with the season moment to me this felt like there one like eric was just kind of completely unable to hold space for gabby like clearly he just is not like she's such an emotional person and he just really couldn't go there with her and like really couldn't receive anything she was saying to me they just felt like a full mismatch in every way he's to me just seemed like annoyed that they weren't just like laughing and making out is what it felt like to me and so to me this was like a moment of like these two are so mismatched and like I I was sad to watch Gabby actually like 
she was like crying he was giving her nothing and then finally she just gets up and sits on his lap so in relationship psychology there's this thing known as attachment theory probably heard of it attachment styles there's the way that your relationship to your earliest caregivers can essentially affect the way that you approach relationships in adulthood and gabby in that moment was like screaming anxious attachment style um which she kind of like she seems to know that it seems like through her therapy and the work that she's done she seems to understand that her relationship with her mother is affecting the way that she is approaching relationships but this to me felt like a moment where maybe there was just you know a little bit of like a like a a a, her like wounded self was kind of coming through and it was a little bit of a moment of my mom never loved me I wish people would love me like I'm gonna like cling to this relationship to this guy with this guy who clearly has it was just so removed from her and disconnected from her but I'm gonna cling to this relationship because I need to feel loved right and so that that's like the classic anxious attachment style behavior of like clinging to a relationship and being really desperate for validation um that's what that moment felt like i was really surprised and and just sad to see her give him that rose when he clearly didn't deserve it whether it's because he was still interested in rachel or if it's because he just kind of wasn't interested in her and able to meet her in that moment but to me it felt very sad to watch all right emotionally they're not there she's obviously attracted to it because she doesn't really understand what it's like to be in a relationship where love is unconditional and she's kind of going after it a little bit so she's definitely repeating patterns of eric which isn't nice to see but i do think that she has pretty good assessment i just hope that her desperation to be loved doesn't accidentally like skew her picker to go towards what she already knows versus what she could have So I think that was kind of what I was noticing. And I really hope that she takes that above board for the rest of the season. Just really being like, okay, these are the connections I need to go after. And I want it to feel like, um, because right right now, yeah, all of the insecurities of them is coming out. And I do think in that day, she was asking for something that he just could not provide. And it was just a lot um, in that day, I think what she wanted from him, this connection of her family, like talking about her mom, I just didn't think that he was ready for it. All the producers who were not dating Gabby were able to hold space for Gabby. And so I don't think that this was a matter of, you know, they weren't close enough yet for her to open up this way as much as it was like, I think they're just not a very compatible in terms of like just emotional uh sensitivity or emotional like depth or connection to their emotions like it seems like there's just like a complete incompatibility she was able to get that from the producers but she couldn't get it from this guy who in theory Mm -hmm. likes her so let us know what you think in the comments below i'm really interested to see what you guys how you guys perceived the interaction because it was so confusing and so weird moving on they went to their group date which was just like a huge it was gabby rachel and 19 guys went on this giant group date to this baseball stadium um followed by an after party and the group date went real well for rachel rachel had a great time which was awesome it was good to see her kind of thriving after last mm-hmm. week when she had a really hard time i think um just feeling like she couldn't figure out which guys were there for her but this week during this group date, she was making out with Avon. Her and Avon were having a great time. It was really cute to watch. She had a thing going with Tino, continued from the first week. Hayden and Tyler, she was having like a lot of really good interactions with different guys. Gabby, on the other hand, was having a really, really hard time. It was so, yeah. so sad to watch. Like, was coming in with this like kind of fresh mind to, you know, just try to enjoy this group date. But the thing that threw her off was that during this group date, she had three different guys come up to her to inform her that they weren't interested in her and that they were pursuing Rachel, which would have been fine if they had done it in a way that was more thoughtful. Some people want to leave constructive criticism. I get it. But the way that they, especially Hayden, phrased it, it was like, you're not elegant or you're not this like picture perfect idea of this person that I'm looking for. You're kind of bubbly, a little rough around the edges. I think that's, he didn't say that, but he said, I want to say something like that. 
and then the way the other guy rejected her where he was basically like if you were the only one here i wouldn't have the heart to continue completely unnecessary like there are some thoughts you can just keep to yourself and it's not gonna hurt anyone because for her to hear that was just like what do you do with fundamental feedback that relates back to who you are intrinsically you can't change that you can't change your personality or how bubbly you are or your life story in the past so the way that they handled that was just like oh my god i want them both to be at home like i don't think they should continue on the journey at all with either bachelorette just based on how they handled the conversation and i do think that they were when gabby and rachel debriefed about it afterwards they were pretty spot on that the men were kind of like in they feel like they can reject one of them and it gives them back a little bit of power so that just kind of felt like to me like oh god i'm so happy that they split it up after that because it was just like i can't continue to watch this i can't continue to watch these like girls get put through the reamer by these guys that don't deserve like to have that kind of power over these two girls that are just trying to have a season to find love you know specifically like hayden and jacob there was just like a little bit of almost like a um this sense of pride almost of like oh yeah all these guys are going after her but i'm not interested and it was like they were using these rejections as a way to like kind of like elevate their own status or like that was like a little bit of just like the energy of those interactions and the few that the subsequent interactions that the that they had with the rest of the group of guys so it did feel like a little bit of there was just like these weird like power plays or power dynamics that were going on you're right there are ways to reject people that aren't so like you don't need to say hey i'm not attracted to you or hey like you are like you know i like elegant women and you're not elegant like you Mm -hmm. don't need to say that you can just say like i'm interested in rachel i think there's a connection there period done you don't need to explain why you don't like gabby it's fine people don't not everyone is going to be each other's types and that's okay, but you don't need to like, because those, those, when you reject someone and you list out things about them that you find undesirable, people retain that, right? I, people mm-hmm. won't forget those things, you know, that they get told about why like a guy won't like them, right? You will remember that. Even if you are totally a confident person, you will always like hear those, those terms being thrown back at you, right? And so it's just, you can be caring and kind even when you're telling someone that you're not interested in them. Like, think about yeah. how the person is going to receive your words instead of just thinking about how can I, like, you know, make it clear or, like, you know, it, it's a combination of things. You want to be really clear, but you also want to be, like, thinking about how this person is going to walk away from this interaction. Just because you don't want to date them doesn't mean that you don't have to care about them, right? I think with rejections, like, a really good note for that is that you can not everyone's going to be for you and you're not going to be for everyone and that is par for the course that's more common than the idea of meeting someone and immediately having it stick so when you're not feeling of someone just lift them up like empower them so that they can move on to the next thing with as much love and grace as you can possibly muster the way that they went around that was just kind of like stepping on them so that they could feel higher so following that group date Rachel gave her group date rose to Avon. Gabby chose not to give her group date rose to anyone. And I think that's what kind of signaled to everyone that something is wrong. Things are not going as well as maybe everyone has been hoping. And so if we get to the rose ceremony, the girls finally make the decision to, we're going to give out roses to the people we want to take with us on our separate journeys. And they are now going to be splitting up the group of guys. There's going to be a group of guys for Rachel and a group of guys for Gabby, um, which seems like, the right decision granted the actual rose ceremony when they were starting to do this it was like the rose ceremony from hell part two (laughs) it was like very very uncomfortable because several guys that rachel called i think three guys rachel called up didn't accept her rose and told her that they were there for gabby which is fine there's you know they have to like follow their hearts but it was definitely a very uncomfortable awkward just like bad feeling rose ceremony i think for all parties involved um but I think it did seem like it was necessary. I just didn't love how 
when Rachel would hand out a rose, if she didn't receive, like, if it was rejected, she couldn't keep the rose. Like, to me, that just felt so Oh my so god, them coming cruel. and taking the roses from her? Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Why are That's you taking her awful. roses, Jessie? Like, yeah, what the Yeah, like, her rose that she, for her possibility to find love, for that to be snatched away from her, that just felt yeah. like, to me, the format of the show really upset me last night. I just felt like it wasn't fair for either of them. They were both getting such the short end of the stick. They're both getting put through the rebar. It's so unfair for them. These guys are taking advantage of the fact that there's two options to choose from, so they don't have to fully commit. It was just like really, really gross to see these girls just unnecessarily get hurt for no reason. So I'm happy that they split up the season now, but I think there is going to be tension with some guys being like, I wish I chose the other bachelorette, which is again, the problem of a double bachelorette season instead of them having one season. Like they're just always, they're never going to feel like they can, at least the guys that are on the fence, they're going to feel like they can't commit. And it comes at the cost of Rachel and Gabby's happiness, unfortunately. I think so. I think you're absolutely right. It's it's a little bit, now it's going to become a little bit of like the forbidden fruit on the other side, you know? Like now that's going to be a little bit of the energy of mm-hmm. of the, you know, the guys group, you know? And so yeah. I don't, I, I hope that this returns some power back to Gabby and Rachel or makes things just a little bit easier and a little bit more clear for them. But at the same time, I can see this also backfiring on them just because you know, there's just the setup of it is, it just makes, we've talked about this before. This is not even the bachelorette anywhere. We're at this point where this experiment, like the core purpose of the experiment is just kind of out the window, out the door. The core idea of like, if we give a girl 30 guys who are here to date her, will she be able to find her match? That's the promise of being the bachelorette. And these girls <laughs> are just all kinds of not getting that. Like in yeah. every way, every step of the way, they're getting like slapped around instead of giving the one thing that they were promised, which was 30 guys who want to date them, right? Agreed, and so agreed. Now yeah. they're down to like, I think Gabby has nine guys left. And Rachel has seven, I think, something like that. So both of them are really down to a much smaller group of guys um, at a pretty pretty early stage of this season, too. It's pretty early for them to have so few people left. So it's, I don't know, I just can see this still backfiring on them in the coming weeks. I can see that, too. And that is just kind of like, it's making it feel a little gross to watch, I think, because I just feel like it's trauma porn almost to like watch these girls go through the exact same dynamics that happened the previous season and for the show not to give them any space to fail upwards I feel like they're just trying to climb out of like the exact same emotional dynamic that they had constructed of Clayton just being repeated for them like the way that they were offering roses and that getting rejected that's not a thing that happens in bachelorette seasons and they're having to reckon with that and it just made me feel like oh my gosh the sooner the men split off the better and the more that they can get back to really being in their own individual journey the better like I want that I think for so them too. let us know what you all thought about Rachel and Gabby's decision to split the guys up do you think that this is gonna help them do you think that it's gonna hurt them let us know down below Make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can hit that little subscribe button below so that you can keep up with us. We'll be following Gabby and Rachel season all the way to the end. So if you want to keep hearing our analysis, make sure you're subscribed. And that is all for today. We will see you next week. Bye. Bye.